But our landscapes aren't static. They've changed and evolved throughout history. And no one can deny that wind farms will certainly change the landscape. What we need to look at are the pros and cons of that change. If we don't build wind farms and continue to burn fossil fuels, how will the resulting climate change affect our landscapes? And if we do build them, how can we be sure that they're sited as sensitively as possible? I don't live near a wind farm, so I can't tell you, but if you do live near a proposed site, then you're going to want to know the answers to questions like, how noisy are they? Now, the truth is that everyone is going to have a different perception as to what does or doesn't affect their quality of life. But findings in surveys on public opinion do find that most people who initially opposed the building of a wind farm supported it once it was up and running. Now we've got various bits of expert opinion for you on this DVD, but my advice to you would be get down to a wind farm, go and have a look and a listen for yourself. Most wind farm developers will offer visits to people who live near a proposed site. Take up that offer and then you can just make up your own mind. As you can imagine, this is an issue that is particularly close to my heart, but it's a debate that demands a clear head as well. The important thing is not just to look at individual wind farms and the effect on the immediate wildlife, but to consider the consequences on wildlife everywhere if we don't reduce the burning of fossil fuels. Now the development of a wind farm, like any construction site, may have an effect on the local wildlife. But wildlife globally will definitely be affected if we don't build them. Now the effect on bird life is one of the most contentious issues in the wind farm debate. Even amongst the organisations that are supporting this DVD, there are disagreements over individual sites. All the more reason to continue the debate and cooperation between all of us who love our wildlife. offshore wind farm. In 2001 it was the first and only offshore wind farm in the UK. Now there are many more both under construction and working and on land as well as offshore. It's a sign of just how quickly wind energy generation is growing in the UK. But unsurprisingly some people are concerned about the effects of this expansion. How economic are they? Will they frighten off tourists? How will they affect our wildlife? And most importantly, do we really need them? The aim of this DVD is to look at these and other most frequently asked questions about wind farms. We've put together some of the UK's top experts to address some of the issues that concern us most. They don't agree on everything, but one thing they definitely do agree on is the need for better informed public debate.
A few months ago, I had a phone call from Aberdeen Council and it was the Community Council. I believe there's a proposal there for a wind farm and they wanted to come through to Adrossan to see for themselves. And I met them at the wind farm. There was perhaps about 50 of them. Some were already in favour of it, but some were very much against it. And we walked round the wind farm and the first thing they said was, there's no noise. And I said, well, that's right. We were told there would be very little noise. Uh, and in actual fact, you don't hear them at all. I think the nearest house is perhaps 800 metres away and there's certainly no noise. They could see for themselves what it was actually like. And I would say the majority, by the time the bus left that day, were quite comfortable with the fact that a wind farm was going to be built in their area. Well, I've been a planning officer for 30 years and until I dealt with the first Swatham turbine I hadn't realised how detailed some applications could be. And the Swatham turbine had the longest, deepest consultation process that I'd ever been through at that time involving the telecoms people, the uh, Ministry of Defence, civil aviation authorities. Almost everybody had a finger to put in the pie before we could ever make a recommendation to our committee. Generally, we look at the impact on local residents. If you get them too close, it's like putting a matchstick in front of your face. If you hold it too close, it looks like a telegraph pole. But if you keep it far enough away, then it looks like a, like a matchstick. So we do take into account the local view. We, we assess how it's going to affect them. We have to be uh, assured that the access to the site is acceptable. We have to be satisfied it's not going to interfere with something like, for instance, television signals, uh, which happened in the Swatham case uh, and had to be rectified. We have to make sure that if there's going to be a tourism aspect, are people going to start flocking to the site to look at the turbine, which has been a real fear in some cases. Well, you should be worried about the fact that our world is getting warmer that um, we're using too much energy from fossil fuels that puts carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and it accumulates there and gradually it will, through a, a greenhouse effect, cause global warming. So why you should be worried is that that will have many effects on the way that the world lives. Uh, the sea levels uh, will rise probably around a meter or so in, in the next century and that will completely swamp out low-lying areas. There will be increasing chances of events like hurricanes, as we've just seen in uh, New Orleans. Uh, they will become more frequent. And of course, the uh, climate in our country will change. Not everywhere uh, for the worse, uh, but many places for the worse. It's extraordinary, really, but people still don't understand how urgent climate change is as an issue. They still think it's something they can address tomorrow rather than today. But all the data coming in now, all the data from melting ice caps, what's happening to the permafrost, if you look wherever you, you find incidents of climate change impacts around the world, the data shows us we need to move now, not tomorrow. That's why it's so important to get our renewables policy in order. And in terms of the things that can make the biggest impact in the shortest period of time, it's wind that is there to be had right now. The RSPB believes that the changing climate, global warming, climate chaos is in the medium to long term going to be the thing that affects our wildlife probably more than anything else. And there's scientific evidence, and the RSPB was part of this study, that shows that about a third of species, birds and plants and mammals on Earth, could be committed to extinction in the next 50 years by climate change. So this is a massive impact on the whole world and its wildlife. So that's why we're really worried about it. And of course, it's going to have massive impacts on our species as well. I think we've seen with Hurricane Katrina that even in America, you cannot go on deferring the realization of how serious this is. Environmentalists in that part of America, in Louisiana, Mississippi, had been saying for 10, 15 years, if you go on disregarding these issues, you go on ignoring what will happen as the temperature 
of the oceans warms up, you will pay a very heavy price. Now, I'm sorry to come down to a bit of old-fashioned doom and gloom, but I have to say to people who are worried about some quite small-scale issues, you better wake up and sniff out what's happening here, because it's going to be a great deal worse than many of the things you're currently worried about.